signs. I say, what's up, guys? You should have worn a hat, too. So, guys, can anybody tell me why I'm wearing a makeshift hat? <laughs> Someone turned off the heat in my Butler Academy. And we got here, it was like low, low 50s, very low 50s. So for those of you that are on the other system, it's about 10 degrees. So I gotta wear a hat. <laughs> Just kidding, we're gonna suck it up. But it is true. Anyways, guys, welcome to the first weekly episode of Roll with the Fox. So we, yes, it is true, we're going weekly. Um, we're gonna tweak the time frame a little bit. We're gonna try to keep it to 20 minutes per episode. Start asking your questions. I already have one that we can answer. Um, I would also be curious, uh, we don't have sort of an episode naming uh, system for the, for the weekly one. So if you guys come up with something creative, we might use it. If not, we're gonna call it season three, episode one. All right? So the first question comes from Anand Sharma from India. And I, I hope Anand is on and I hope I understood the question correctly. So what happens, I believe, and if, if I had misunderstood your question, you can ask me um, just again. But what I understand correctly is that when he trains sometimes he visits a, 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 a certain academy, um, he's in guard, his opponent opens the guard, and then he goes either for an ankle lock or worse yet, stand up for me for a second, or just throws the leg over. So, guys, first of all, there you go, stay there. <laughs> guys, I am not a fan of what Enrique is doing. This is very dangerous. You see this a lot in tournaments. However, that tends to be at highly advanced levels where guys know how to deal with it. If you're not highly advanced, I strongly discourage you from doing this, particularly in a training scenarios because that falling weight, as John calls it, of Enrique, where he doesn't really have control over my leg. However, depending on how he falls, how much uh, reaping does he do on my leg could be very, very bad. That's this one, this sort of where um, that attack from the top, throwing the leg over can result in a lot of injuries. All right, so I'm, I'm very, very anti that particular move, unless you're highly advanced, all right? But let's deal with the question. All right, so guys, if I see, it doesn't matter whether the guy has leg locks or what, I don't really care. As soon as he stands up, I'm opening the guard on my terms. The only way I would possibly not do that is, is if we had the gi grips, if I had a really strong grip on his collar and a sleeve. But um, anytime I feel somebody, in, particularly in, in, in uh, no gi scenario, what I'm doing is immediately hiding my feet. So one foot on the hip, one foot de la Hiva hook, two feet on the hips, one foot under the ankle, butterfly guard, go for the shim. <laughs> you should have worn a hat. Guys, that's going to be the new theme of season three. My brain is not warm. <laughs> <laughs> His brain is not working. So. Anytime somebody stands up in your guard, you don't, I, tend, I don't usually wait. You can kind of get a good sense when he stands up, how well he stands up, where his legs are, where his arms are, that he's probably going to open your guard. I'd rather open the guard on my terms and immediately attack than wait for him to pop it open and then now I'm reacting to him. So again, he seizes the momentum if I wait for him um, you know, to open my guard and then reacting. By then, already he's already attacking. So again, let's go over that from, from this position. So Enrique stands up in my guard. I immediately feet two feet on the hips, one foot on the hip, de la Hiva hook, one foot on the hip, hook the ankle, butterfly guard. You could go, yeah. <laughs> you should have warmed up and, and wore a hat. So that's sort of the, uh, uh, the way to deal with that from the bottom, is hide your feet. Start to put your grips, and I mean your foot grips, where they're supposed to be. 
Again, I'm a big fan of feet on the hips, or you can get sort of a, a even if he's standing butterfly, um, you know, um, shin guard and start attacking immediately. All right, I, I like the feet on the hips anyways, because usually when he stands up, I put my foot on the hips. I can, then I could try to break his posture and start to uh, misalign him and attack from split guard. Do we have any confirmation if I understood the question correctly? Uh, I don't see anything from Anand, but we have a question from GM Baseball. He's asking, can you please show the Urigatami and Delahiva follow-ups when someone stands in your close guard? Okay. Yeah, I, I, I opened. So this is a good segue into that, yes. So, Enrique stands up in my close guard immediately. So I go Delahiva hook. Now, a lot of times, the guy... Uh, hold on one second. If I could... I would actually put my foot on the hip as well. But it's fairly easy for Enrique to, to strip it. But the other pro problem is sometimes the way the guy stands, there's not a lot of, lot of room for me to hook it properly. So if you can see, there's a lot of space. So even though I'm barely touching him, this grip is not very effective. So I'll make the quick judgment call. If, if I can get the foot on the hip like this, I would. But if I can't, if he's sort of squatting down, good posture, I will probably use a De La Hero. Now, what I'm gonna do is I, I will immediately try to off balance him and I'm sitting up and attacking Rigatana. Once I start to stretch him out, I will transition to the hip. So let's look at it from another angle, maybe from the side. So again, um, hold on one second. Guys, when you have somebody in your, in your closed guard, I'd rather not let him stand up, whether it's from a grappling perspective or from a uh, self-defense MMA perspective. If somebody postures up, they can hit you. So what I'm a fan of is when they're in my closed guard, I'm trying to swim, I'm trying to create something. All right, so that's first mistake that, that uh, if I close my guard, I want his posture broken and I want to attack immediately. But suppose you close your guard, Immediately, yeah. So again, Enrique, the way he stands up, he's very familiar with my game. He doesn't want to let me have a strong position with my left foot on his hip. So I'll switch instead to De La Hiva. What I'll do is, is, is I can attack the arm and at the same time start to push out, or I can push out and attack the arm. Once I'm here, I will transition my left foot on the hip and start to you know, all the Uriga-Pana sequences. And Adolfo Ferranda is asking, good morning, Fox, Enrique, and Mike, uh, and the uh, Roll with the Fox, uh, AV Tribe. Oh, no. He's just saying this up. There's weekly another... Tribe now. Yeah, Weekly Tribe. <laughs> How about uh, Strongly Tribe? <laughs> Season 3 Tribe. <laughs> So his question is, Fox, do you play reverse De La Hiva? I'm just starting to learn it and could use any tips for a beginner to that game. It seems to be really helpful to stop the knee cut and smashing. Uh, it, it does, but it also, you know, just like everything else in jiu-jitsu, I don't play it a lot. I tend to play more regular De La Hiva. I, I tend to play De La Hiva, um, split guard, and perpendicular guard. Those are probably my three top guards to go to. But I will, you know, it depends how he's standing, I will play reverse De La Hiva. Um, the one thing I'm not sort of a, a big fan is, is because as you well know, my, my back is, I've had problems since I was a kid, but the problem is, is, is depending how, you know, how the guy reacts. So if I have a reverse De La Hiva, if I'm inverting, this is great. But if, if, if Enrique is, is sort of low or, or as I'm inverting, he, start, he basically just starts to squash me. You kind of get caught. And now my, you know, I don't have a lot of options from here to move around. So sometimes if I get stacked and I'm kind of in a position to, you know, bail again on, on, on the, you know, him stacking me, I'm okay with it. With reverse Dalahiva, because if, if he stops me before 
I kind of get underneath him and start to start to off balance him. You stack with not a whole lot of places to go. So it's for somebody that's um, a little bit more flexible in their lower back than I am. But but I do I will do it especially if I see the guy you know uh, you know Enrique starts to click yes, and now we got something going on. All right. So yeah, I think it's a very good entry for. Um, leg locks, uh, the guy, but the guys that are particularly good at it, you know, is, is uh, Rob Beagle, John Halstein, guys like that, that, you know, they're particularly good at it. They tend to be a little shorter stature and, and flexible, so you can check out their, their, their games, you know, that's, that's where you're probably going to get sort of really good uh, reverse doll heel entries. And Max Spurgia is saying, Hi, Fox and crew. Thanks for the effort. One of the most difficult things is to isolate and control the arm to do that arm bar from that position. The what are you talking? Tommy. And he says, do you have any suggestions? I mean, yes. with a good opponent. Yes. <laughs> Buy my BJJ Fanatics DVD. <laughs> <laughs> I will give you. And, and there is a lot of stuff on the on Uregatame. Guys, there is uh, Adolfo Ferranda actually put a there's, it's on Google, um, Google Docs or something. There is a uh, an index of all the techniques we did in the antivirus daily edition, which is there's 99 episodes. I don't know if it, it might include. I think it includes other other videos that I've done. Whether it's you know, I think it includes stuff yeah, I've yeah. done with Firas and and others. So just also go refer to that. If that fails, go on YouTube, hit the search button, and write Ude Gatame and Ude Gatame, two words, and it will come up. But usually the, the, the biggest problem is on the isolation of that arm is, is you being lined up with, with your opponent. That's the single biggest uh, cause of failure. I don't like where you step in. So <laughs> I think I step a little too close to, uh, for my comfort. But so... In order for me to get an isolation, I need his elbow. Right now, I can enter already. So you can see how his elbow is. This, I can do. Uh, if his elbow is kind of almost either square or inverted, this is going to be hard. This is not going to work. So I need his elbow to be flared out just, just a little bit or more, more than either this or more. But once I go in, the most important thing for you to do is now, first of all, uh, I like... You can do this in butterfly guard, but in a butterfly guard, the guy can still s s come in a little bit, and, and um, when they come in, um, they can retract their elbow. So I like feet on the hips to make sure that they cannot move their hips forward. But the most important thing is try to go perpendicular. So as soon as I attack from here, so I'm entering, and now I'm looking to do perpendicular. Enrique reacts because he's seen this a million times. He puts his head down. All right? So, but you can see that I have to try to go as perpendicular to him as possible. So if Enrique is lined up with me, so even if, if his elbow is flared out and I, I, he's lined up, he can take the, his arm easily. Now, when he's, when I'm perpendicular, it's much more difficult for him to with, withdraw his arm. I'm not 100% perpendicular, but it, I'm trying to make his arm perpendicular. So my body's not quite 100% perpendicular, but his, uh, his arm is. This is where he's weaker, and this is yes. This is where things start to go badly for him. I hope that helps. Uh, I am sure that there is a lot of ways, you know, I think I might have explained the Uregatame in more detail in one of the, uh, one of the episodes. And Lane Young says both the armbar and guillotine DVDs are awesome. Thank you. Guys, by the way, I appreciate the reviews. Yes, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm doing another one next week. <laughs> and... Uh, Hachardis is asking, how do you prevent the knee cut pass without the reverse of the Heba guard? He's been Brazilianized. <laughs> you said Hachardis. Hey, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Are we doing this? 
<laughs> How are we doing this? <laughs> so, yeah, that's one way is a reverse the Hiva. Uh, but I don't necessarily, um, there's, you know, in general, in Jiu Jitsu, there's two ways to kind of squash your opponent's attack. One is to stop him, and the other way is to make him overshoot. So, as Enrique is cutting through, so if I, you know, if I, if I got the uh, reverse Dalahiva, but suppose I didn't. So I gotta watch my foot, but he's gonna have a hard time rolling on his terms just because I have, yeah. That's it. So basically, I make him overshoot and come out the back way. And Engsberg is asking how to prevent the smash pass when going for that Delhi Hebrew. From regular Delhi From regular Delhi Hebrew? Reverse. I'm assuming from regular. So, if I have regular De La Hiva, um, yeah, he has to make some major movement, but you can see that before that happens, I'm constantly readjusting my grips. So you have to, again, whether it's readjusting grips or, and, and I include both the head grip, I include, you know, arms, wrists, and I include the feet. So, if you just kind of place your feet in certain position, there is a counter to everything in, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So no matter what you do, the guy can, can uh, you know, can attack and, and take it away from you. So as he's doing that, I'm, I'm adjusting. I'm constantly adjusting until, you know, I, and I don't want to just keep adjusting. I want to get my grips and go. You know, how many of my students hear this all the time, especially in competition? Get your grips and go. Don't just kind of put your, uh, put your uh, feet or put your, uh, you know, get your grips and then sit there waiting for him to take it away from you. So again, uh, if, if he, so if I, what I'm doing is when I, when I uh, attack regular De La Hiva, I'm looking for a variety of, of, of things. But before I get a chance to do that, let's say he takes, you know, as soon as he's squashing another one, I'm, I'm taking another grip, but as soon as I get a grip that allows me to attack, I attack, all right? That's, uh, again, um, you know, this is one of the hardest things to do when you're starting out or relatively new to jiu-jitsu uh, because, you know, it's, it's, you don't have a big toolbox, so as soon as the guy takes away the first grip, you're like, okay, what's next? Or you may know what's next, but it takes you three seconds to figure it out. By then, he's already on top of side control, you know, um, Take it a Kimura or, or Americana. So uh, you have to uh, sort of start, learn to just kind of just get your grips, then figure out what you're gonna do with those grips. Start to, usually if you're on the bottom, start to off balance. If, if he stumbles, here's your chance to, to uh, either sweep him or get a submission. I know it sounds very simple. I know, it, I, I don't know, it's, I know it's not. You know, because you do need to know kind of, you know, it's not just one sequence because every, every time the grips change, the sequence might be different. But that's how you progress through jiu-jitsu and, you know, become better and better. It's just, you know, the longer you train, the better you become. And Jimmy T is asking, can you show us the defense for the close guard arm drag? So, a couple of things. Um, obviously, I'm uh, sort of trying to keep him on that side. But the other thing is what I'm doing is I'm, I'm trying, I'm conscious of having my legs and my hips in a position 
Do not allow him. Because right now, what am I in danger of? Triangle, not so much. Armbar, yes. So I know that he can sort of now... So, yeah, this, that's... That's the, that's the most likely attack. So again, the, the defense kind of is one is... When he goes for the arm drag, I kind of freeze him in that position uh, briefly. All right? So as soon as he's there, I kind of freeze him there briefly, where now I'm giving him one op option to attack, which is the most logical for him, which is to attack the armor. But I know it's starting to sound like that guy in, the, in, the <laughs> in Princess Bride. <laughs> so I know when he drags me, <laughs> I give him one option with which to attack me. And I'm gonna counter that attack. All right, so let's look at it again. It's a little easier with no E. So Enrica drags me. So notice what I did is I slid, but also, so I slid my left hip lower and, and flared out my left knee. So, because I want him to feel like, okay, I have the arm bar, but I'm also pushing down my, my uh, stomach and my hips to make sure that his, his hip movement is not completely uh, smooth. Now, I know he's gonna bring it over. So this leg is not gonna come up that easily. His right leg, a lot of times that's the leg that's critical to arm barring somebody. So all I need to do is slow this down, which gives me the time To bring this in, posture up, and now I'm actually I'm gonna pass his guard. <laughs> he said uh, his follow-up question, which is the last question before we close up. Uh, how do I prevent him from taking my back? I keep getting my back taken from there. Oh, okay, um, so that means you kind of missed that this this first defense. What I try to do is, is try to get my right leg up. If I can get my right leg take up, I can sort of at least, I may wind up on the bottom, but I wind up with something not horrible, all right? So again, if, if he drags you, so if I get the first one, he's not taking my back. He can still attack the armbar, right? But we went over how to squash the armbar. So he, cannot, he, he can no longer take my back. But if you sort of wait, try to get the right leg up. Now we have at least scrambled. Even if he does wind up on top, say hello to my little friend. Yeah. All right, so that's the second line of defense. The first line of defense is try to freeze him there where his only option is to attack the arm bar and you can squash him. If you miss that opportunity, if, if he drags me in this direction, bring up your right leg. Bring up the right leg. Go back, go back, go back. If, he, if you freeze him here, you can actually start to drive forward. Okay? Drive the right leg forward. But even if you miss it, what I'm going to do is the right leg allows me to get a deep underhook or seat belt grip. And now I could probably bring him back down or just attack with a guitar on this side. All right. I hope that answers your question. Guys, we're weekly. I'll see you next Friday, 10.30 a.m. Eastern time, which is New York City time. Uh, Friday, April 9th. Yes. See you then, guys. Hey, guys, don't forget to like. Follow, share, subscribe, tell your friends about it. Yes. <laughs> if you have no friends, tell your family about it. <laughs>